Hello, and welcome once again to Lost in Criterion, the show where I, the Adam Glass, and my good friend, John... John there, Patrick, we're going to do your introduction. And... I was worried you were going to introduce Don. As a special so guest, in. though, Pat already uh, already blew the load on that one, didn't he? Uh, we Shit. got... Oh, man, I gave it away <laughs> since he's our We have guest. Donovan Hill with us once again. Thank you for coming, Donovan. Well, thank you. We'll come back to the theme of uh, blowing loads early in this episode's you know review of yes. high and low, as that's a theme that is repeatedly uh, you know really prevalent in that film in this film yes. that we're about to discuss. Premature ejaculation. It's is? at the heart of. It's I, at the heart. Of I want to see how Donovan pulls I, I that all together. I'm really, I'm, I'm really, really curious. curious. So, as he said, we were talking about High and Low, uh, Akira Kurosawa, uh, 1963, uh, literally translated, actually, to Heaven and Hell, which is a much more appropriate title for, for what's going on here. Um, right. So, why um, is it called I don't High know. and Low? I don't uh, know. <laughs> it, is, it is a modern uh, movie, at least set in, you know, 1963 when it was made, which is very, uh, not not what we're used to with our Kurosawa <laughs> so far. Um Though I guess our only Kurosawa so far was uh, Seven Samurai, so I can't really make that argument. But, you know, when I think of Kurosawa, I don't think of modern modern tales. I think of, you know, Imperial Japan, historic epics. Um, yeah, right. swords. swords. Uh, but it does star uh, one of his favorite actors, uh, uh, Mifune, uh, whose first name I can't remember. <laughs> uh, and uh, he, Toshiro uh, Mifune, Toshiro. who uh, plays the executive... Who is, without question, probably the greatest actor that he ever is. Lived. He is an amazing actor. I. Uh... <laughs> yeah, he does an excellent job in this film. Uh, so this this movie uh, is a very interesting movie. He plays a an executive at a women's shoe company, a self made man, uh, worked his way up, um, and is trying to position himself to take over the company. Uh, he is in that regard uh, mortgaged his house, mortgaged most of his earnings, uh, most of his, his possessions, without his wife's knowledge, uh, to make enough money to buy out stock that he can take over. Uh, when the plot happens, he gets a phone. Well, it's also important to note that, like, it's not it's not super important, but it is kind of to the story, is that he is kind of taking over the company because it's basically run by assholes. And, like, he loves the company enough that he... It is, in a way, this movie is kind of the opposite of Robocop. In that he loves this company. This company, like, raised him from, like, 16 on. And that love means that he has yeah. to he, find a way is, to protect it. Like, he has to save his company. This is a man who, um, despite, despite the moral arguments he gets into himself that make up the first half of this movie, uh, he is he's not only self-made... But he remembers where he came from. He still has in ready ready access his old shoe repair tools that he probably hasn't used in you know twenty years. But he, right, but he keeps them in a place where his wife literally yes. knows where they are. It's like go get yes, my shoe repair right. tools, and she's like, oh, that bag yeah. under the bed or whatever. Yeah. She doesn't but say she, that, but yeah. I mean, she's able to find it yeah. in a minute. Yeah. That old chest. So anyway, uh, he's positioning himself to kind of take over, and and the jerks who also want to take over try to enlist his help. And man, did they yes. find some jerks. The dudes even yes, look like jerks. They do. It's amazing. As soon as they Whatever show up, you're they... like, well, these guys are all assholes. Yes. That's like, yeah, right? Like, the casting oh, yeah. in this film yeah. is fantastic. Like, they couldn't have found, like, I mean, the one guy's face that we see, they, they regularly do close ups of his face, I think, just because of Kira Kurosawa. I was like, hey, check out this asshole. It's true. It's true. Even his, even his face yes. is an asshole. Yeah. No, it's really great. Um, so they get in an argument, and he kicks them out, and, you know, he's, he's already got his plan in motion to, to take over things when he gets a phone call uh, from someone who says they kidnapped his son. And, you know, they demand uh, 
thirty million, thirty million, which is yeah. which is enough that it's going to be, uh, you know, a major a major thorn. It's going to ruin him financially when he pays eh, if he pays this. He's got he's got fifty million liquid right now to buy the stock, but you know if he uses that money, not only is he going to lose his house, he's going to lose his job. Um, so it's going to completely ruin him. And then his son walks into the house. And everybody's, oh, what's what's this? What kind of jerk made that phone call, saying they kidnapped a boy who's clearly still here? And then the chauffeur walks in and says, yeah. "But my son's missing." Yes, right. And I want to. And then Toshiro um, Mifune cuts him down with a katana in a lightning flash no, display. No, no of that's, that, that, that is a ash. different movie. That is. A different I would like movie. to point out that we are to just make it clear the amount of money we're working with is. For the time period is just incredibly yeah. right. Well, I'm not going to do that because I can't do that. But uh, dealing with that, like we're talking about at that time, I don't know what the Japanese currency was worth compared to the dollar at the time. But like 30 million yen is yeah. a lot of money, but it's not like we're not actually talking yeah. millions. Of but dollars. even we're talking a reasonable amount of money that a man yeah. could get from mortgaging his house and yeah. Like and even, even within the movie, without understanding, you know, currency exchanges, we're told by the police that the very highest ransom that has ever been demanded for anyone was two million was yen. Two million, and this is f- fifteen times right. larger than that already. So you know, it's it's clearly meant to be a lot yeah, of money. Yeah, um, it is a lot of money, but I, yeah, it's also because like it's hard to comprehend. Like when you're dealing, like he's buying this company, which with an amount of money that. Today would not yeah. seem like a lot of money, but the, the, yeah, it's just it's important to note in my mind that like this is a m- amount of money that he the was ransomers able to be a dick. Yeah, but it's also an amount of money that is possible for yeah. a person to have, like because like in this in the weird environment of the film, if you take thirty million as being like thirty, almost like reading it as thirty million dollars, it's like almost inconceivable yeah, that's not... like, that he could find that. But much we money. know that yeah. he already has fifty million. You know, he has a check for fifty yeah. million in his hand, basically. It's established yeah. that he's Toshiro, yes. and he can do whatever he wants, and therefore has and access. His, to his name wants. is Kingo, yeah. so yeah. you know, whatever. Kingo yeah. Gordo, he is he is the fat king. Yeah, <laughs> I I never got tired of <laughs> yes. his hilarious name. Yeah. I'll say that. Much. <laughs> <laughs> Just old Kingo Gordo. Yeah. So anyway, Kingo as Kato. it as it turns out, it's the chauffeur's son who's been kidnapped. The kidnapper realizes his mistake, calls back, and says, "You know what." Pay me anyway, or I'll kill the kid. Um, and we we set off our our hour long in this living room um, stage dramatization of. It's so of, weird, right? Because people who aren't involved in the action just go into like yes. sleep mode. The, it's the really film's the film's weird. working title was a living room for like a, for <laughs> yeah. like at least an hour. Yeah, it's it's. This guy. No, it's just a picture of Toshiro Mifune and his this yeah. man's well, living room. It's, it's, this man's living room. That was its. A, that was its actual. It's a lot like. It's like, a lot like Twelve know. Angry Men. It's it's the single room, and we just watch the pot boil. It is a, it is tight, a tight focused, focused film. film, and and it's really. And it's it's yeah. weird. It, it it that's weird because of the way he does. You know, in a, you know, in a modern yeah. film, you would get you would dispose of the characters who yeah. are not. But they're all there. Anything. You but get them off screen. But they're all there. And they and go into sleep staged. mode. It's, they just sit there and stare at their feet. I love it, though. I love it's the way it's staged. Because it stays very too. much I like, do, a, I do like an ensemble play. play. Where where the people not involved, the action is focused. You know, it'll just be one corner of the stage where the action is. But everybody else is just kind of sitting there. And, you know, they're not necessarily... They're not a part of the action. They're not paying attention to the action, even. But they are still there because they'll be needed in a few seconds. But it's a it's a really weird way yeah. to shoot a film because you oh, don't need to do those things in film. Oh, it's absolutely ridiculous way to shoot a film. But but because I don't know, it just it works for me. It really works. For it's me. fun. I I enjoyed it. It it, it was interesting. Yeah. It's just like really weird because you have no reason why you have yeah. to do that. So in it's, film. it's 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 you can have him walk off camera. It's fully fifty five minutes of him standing there. Having, oh man, that's a hell of his, living room. You know, having his moral dilemma argument over whether or not he is obligated or wants to ruin his life and his family's life, financially at least, um, in order to save 
the son of his loyal chauffeur. Um, and the chauffeur begs for the money, and you know, the wife says, no, we can make it, and there's all these arguments, and he, he shoots them down. I love, I love what his response to his wife is, is basically, no, you don't get it. You were born into luxury. If we lose this money, you'll hate it. You'll break. <laughs> and she says, no, no, I'm strong. I'm strong. I can imagine Anne Romney's reaction to that. <laughs> but, uh, well, you know, what's weird about this film, and one of those weird things that kind of bother me is, it's kind of <laughs> disturbingly it, it, No, it really is. It really It so is. Like, the way he treats his wife is disgusting. Well, King Go Gordo. So, you know, yeah, I mean, it's all I, the we, name. We've already, right, right. We, we already know that he's he's mortgaged everything without telling her. And she's constantly, constantly right. dressed as a geisha for some reason. <laughs> well, no, she's just, she's, yeah, that's not that <laughs> I'm unusual. sure it's not. She's not. No, no, that, I, true, it might true, be a little bit fact, unusual. True facts here. Uh, in fact, all women in Japan basically default to geisha dress whenever they're not well, actively dressed she's up not, she's, not, she's not wearing no, a it's geisha. Not. She's, it's or not. she's not dressed like a geisha. She's she's wearing a kimono. And for a high class lady who's entertaining guests, that wouldn't yeah. be that unusual. It's a little odd that even after things go really far <laughs> south, yeah. she's still wearing it. But I think that's just because they didn't want to confuse things with costume changes. Because almost yeah. nobody changes. Well, no costume. one changes their clothes. Period. Almost. <laughs> Yeah, it's, and so it's like, like days um, and days, and everybody's in the same clothes, and that you know right, that adds and like, to. It. And the idea is like, right? It's and and so like, I mean, her care, her behavior is not that, is not that out of sorts. She's a high, she's a very yeah. upper class lady. Yeah. She's entertaining. No, guests. it makes sense. It she's makes going sense. to dress You're right. nice. You're right. Yeah, I mean, it's like wearing a nice dress. When like business partners yeah. of your husband were coming over, it would I not just, be that unusual to wear. I, a nice dress. I can't. It, it, I, know, I know it's weird, but it, it's only weird because yeah. we're not. I can't get over just how much I, I. I mean, I just, I just went to a wedding today, and people, tons of people are. In I, I love so how much I love. I guess just this, this whole because it's so staged. Right, it's yeah. so much it's like so watching much like play. watching a play, and you know, even we get a few, a few. Uh, there's obviously a lot of cuts, but we get a few angle changes. But still, the majority of it is is very flat, very. Yeah, we're, we're watching, watching the, a stage entire stage from the side. Yeah, and hey, check it out! It's yeah. his living room. I hope and it's you're his living room. And, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope your chair, chairs are as comfortable as yeah. it is. And, and even very rarely are we like watching from over the back of the couch. It's it's really a lot of it is like we're just sitting on that couch. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're in his living room. We are room just as much in this. It's yeah, kind of cool. It really works well. It really draws draws everything in. Um, one time we do cut away from that is the sort of uh, um, the Pontius Pilate moment, uh, where, where he he's finally decided to uh, to that he's not going to pay, and then he decides he has to go take a shower because he's so disgusted with himself. And after after he takes that shower, he runs back. He answers the phone and tells tells he's changed his mind. He tells the kidnapper he'll pay the money. Um, but but up until that point, and even you know. Since he goes into the shower thinking he's not going to pay, and comes out of the shower realizing that he has to pay, it's it's that's just and that's an hour in. That's how slow boil this this movie is. Oh yeah, like this movie is. Whew, yeah, it's long. It takes, but it's it, it's good though. I mean, you don't feel the time drag too bad. I mean, it is an hour of this guy's living room, but it, it doesn't it doesn't no, feel it, it like really it drags because like you you're you're invested in yeah. his emotions. Yeah, it's it's very much you you buy into what he's. It's going It's very to. much like the Seven Samurai, where you know we got to the intermission and I was surprised that it's been an hour and a half already. Mm -hmm. This movie, the first hour, doesn't feel like an hour, and and. The fact that it doesn't feel like an hour when we really have no change of scene and barely a change of angle um, it means, it means, means there is some acting excellent acting and directing going on. Uh, it's it's amazing how how well that works. Um, <laughs> but we get we we finally get to the point where he decides to pay, and the the whole movie just switches switches tone and. Uh, yeah, it's everything. everything. Yeah, it, it becomes well. It becomes, yeah, it a, becomes police a straight police at that point. procedural, um, which is which weird. Is, which is weird, uh, but you know it works. 
You know, it, it's it, what it, the good news is I it's, love it's police what it procedurals. So. I was surprised actually in the police procedural portion of this how much of it uh, felt like just a modern episode of Law and Order. Yeah. Right down to the maps on the board, yeah. and like circles when, when they show up and it just goes bam bam bam. bam, bam. <laughs> no, my, my favorite part is there's there's a comedian I can't remember his name, but he talks about Law and Order a lot, and he he talks about how he doesn't understand. The reaction of like the bartenders and the guys unloading trucks when the murder police come to talk to him, and he doesn't stop his job. It's like, oh yeah, I remember that guy, and just keeps unloading the boxes. But we get that in this movie, <laughs> with the uh, with the guy with the trash burner. Um, they go to talk to the guy burning the trash. Hey, what's it to do with and, me? And it's all yeah, it's that bad. whole like, I don't and, care. And, and you know, he's 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 still moving. You can't burn you tin. You can't burn tin. That's, he's yelling about how people are bringing him garbage. He's my wife's grandpa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I've, we've had that conversation. Goddamn yes. kids. Yes, he's talking about how you can't... They bring him the trash that he can't do anything with, so he's got to get rid of it now. And that's that's his end of the conversation. It's like, oh, I kind of remember that guy. Hey, let, let me talk about how people don't respect my job for a while. <laughs> yeah, but, and, you know, I... Yeah, I, the, I'm not sure that it's that unrealistic. No, it's not. Because as soon as you find out that the police aren't investigating you for the murder and all they want is information, yeah. it's like, well, I didn't know yeah, that exactly. guy. Yeah, exactly. No. What do you, how are you supposed to process it? You're supposed to cry yeah. for him? And it's not. you got a job to do. It's not unrealistic. And that's what I love, that, that this hits so many of the tropes that are still used in that sort oh, of police yeah. procedural it's, thing. It is a it is a straight police yeah. procedural, and and I love it because I love police. <laughs> I love police procedurals. But even like American police procedurals at the time didn't necessarily get that deep into all this because it's all it's all. Oh yeah, this goes crazy yeah. deep. This is like it's like yeah. How about you, Bob? Did you check out the <laughs> yeah. yeah? Like would they do that roundup yeah. at the end or at, at the, that yeah. one meeting? It's like we went through every possible thing they could <laughs> yes. investigate. They. They are. They have decided to convince us that they are legitimately yeah. investigating. And every this every single officer crime. in the in the police department is has, has something, something to do with it. I I really do love actually. We we kind of jumped uh, chronologically. Uh, the plan, the kidnapper's plan for how he gets the money, is so ridiculously ingenious. The because yeah. uh, it's the you know he wants he wants it in cases that are two point five inches thick. And we come to find out that's because that's how far the windows in the laboratory of the bullet train open. So that they can th- shove it out the window when it's, you know, 20 minutes from the next stop. <clears throat> um, so they can make their escape really quick. Um, but here's a question. Can Japanese police not stop a train? Nothing can, I know nothing can stop train, the bullet train, like, Pat. You should know that. You live there. I know. I was. I did think that <laughs> when I was watching. I was like... Show, show a badge. I bet we can pull off into a sighting or probably, something. Probably. We do, probably don't have to wait 20 minutes to get to but the But still, United it's probably... It's gonna... You're not gonna yeah, catch Yeah, you're not gonna catch it. But at least that. you can get to the scene quicker yeah. than an hour that later. That is true. That is true. It was my feeling. It's like, the evidence is gonna be more likely there if you have the train pull over into one of the sightings. And, and obviously... Get to the scene fifteen minutes late rather than two obviously days late. by that point the staff knows that there's police on board because they have people with cameras in the uh, in the uh, driver compartments right at right. both ends of the train. So, but yeah, it's uh, that's a little I, that was a, that was one little, little minor, minor thing. thing. Like, Why didn't we stop? It was the like train, the only. You know? I, I think that's really the only moment where I was pulled out of the movie though. Was was thinking about eh, why don't they just stop the train? And yeah, I mean, obviously you can't just stop in the middle of the tracks, but I mean, there's sightings, there's places to pull over. But maybe, you know, at the same time, maybe the fear, maybe there is a legitimate fear in the minds of the characters that if they, uh, if they reveal themselves, they'll kill the, they'll boy. Kill the boy. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, so it, it, it's not entire. it's not, this film does a pretty yeah. good job of that. It, I, it's not, that was just one thing I thought, I was like, huh, that's weird. Um, but yeah, no, the whole police procedure, I really enjoyed it because even actually one of the things I think is missing in a lot of police dramas in modern television is we've kind of left behind that we're going to get to the answer through hard work. And we've now gone to <laughs> there watch was not Super a... Guy number four and watch his amazing leap of logic. Yes. 
you'll or notice his that, amazing uh, ability. At no point in this film did anyone go enhance. Enhance. Yes. Yes. Yeah, right, exactly. We, we've backed we back hacked his IPs <laughs> and retraced the firewalls. Enhance. Alright, we got yeah, it. Yeah, and, and actually it's yeah, it's a plot yeah, point that the pictures are so grainy and so uh so ill focused that they can't and do anything. Basically with them. useless, yeah. But yeah. And, like, I understand that, the, you know, now in modern police dramas, they need to, like, oh, well, we have technology, so we have to use it. But the problem I have is that it's not just the technology. It's that modern police dramas are so full of, like, deus ex machina. Yes. Like, here's this thing Namely, that's gonna happen, all of the that's detectives gonna make it... are walking deus ex machina generation. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Especially, what was it, Criminal yes, Intent? Yes, with Vincent Donofrio's character in so Criminal Intent. <laughs> <laughs> who's a, basically a magician. He would just lean uh, over, he would lean over in front of his suspect in a really, like, uncomfortable way and just, like, get in their face, like, leaning himself over to 90 degree angle and then, kaboom, he had to do You know, what I really love about that character yeah, is that exactly. he would invite people's, like, family members when he broke them so that there's... <laughs> to watch them, to watch him <laughs> lean over and humiliate their... Yes. Their... What a dick. Yeah, and so what I'm saying is, is this film doesn't yeah. have that. All they do is detective yes. work. Yes, and it, and I love it. I love watching detective work. Yeah, so so it's 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 weird though, you know, because we have that we have the first hour in the living room, then the next ten minutes on the train, and then the next half hour is and in that meeting room. Is, is detective work? Yeah, and, yeah. and at least we have cutaways oh, yeah, to the it. detective work, to the to the people actually doing what they're talking about them doing instead of just listening yeah. to them talk about it. <laughs> Which would have made the movie. But honestly, I could would have made the movie incredibly boring. boring but, <laughs> but I, I, yeah, it's it's done. It's done so well. It's such. I don't know. It's. I love it. I love it. Um. <laughs> but there's one problem, and I think we're getting close what? enough. There's one problem. <laughs> no, I have okay. a problem that made me sad. The fact that the guy who does yeah. it basically does it because he's gone yes. crazy yeah i was just i to say, really my biggest to problem with this have... film is that like the when they finally do at the very end get to it's the just villain's motivations he's just like oh, i'm just kind of an asshole yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah i'm just there's a, no I'm there's just no a like great i was and... the guy you spurned early on in your career on your way to the right, top there's exactly no, it's just like there's no connection you know, to the you assholes this house of the company. That, and i'm a dick yeah <laughs> well yeah and that yeah. is one problem with the movie um is this sort of uh is that this villain has this incredibly elaborate, well planned out, ingenious scheme, yeah. which seems to belie a certain pathos and intellect, and then he's just like, "No, I'm just, you know, yeah. I'm just kind of your the entire the entire well, motivation the, is lower class jealousy." <laughs> but the weird thing about it is, is that he picks a guy who he totally could have picked somebody who's got more money yeah. than this guy, and he could have picked somebody who and actually demands it. it. <laughs> Well, yeah, but I mean, like, let's assume he's just a sociopath yeah. and he doesn't read the world that way. He still didn't pick a guy who's yeah, that rich. Exactly. You don't get the impression. Yeah, this is the largest ransom ever, but like, but he is the amount he's asking for. The, the amount he's asking for, Toshiro Mifune's character can barely yeah. pay. Yeah, but it it is if he sacrifices everything. It is though, and this guy has no way to know that he's already sacrificed everything. Yeah, it's it's again. That's why. You hear when his, when you, the whole time when this is all unfolding, you almost get the sense that this guy knows that Mufune has, yeah. you know, by horrible coincidence, yeah. put himself in the position where this is this terrifying, you know, soul destroying choice that he has to make. When in reality, this dude just kind of blindly picked this guy. And, He's on uh, his house. cause, cause fuck you, you got a nice yeah, house. Well and I'm and I'm yeah, a dick. And, it, I, and like and am I the only one? Maybe I'm not. I was what waiting if, the entire time yeah, for it to be those yeah, company people yeah. behind it. It's him. kind of it retroactively sort of makes you go, "Oh, about what are up to then, you know, this gene the genius plan of this guy and the, you know, precision timing with which he exacts this excruciating choice on Kingo Gondo Hondo Gonzo whatever." <laughs> Like and it's, and it's not, and then you're like, oh, or it was just like it's completely just random chance, and this dude is just a yeah. dick, and that so yeah, they kind of they deflate their own villain a little bit, which in a you know wheels within wheels elaborate plot police procedural is sort of de you know yeah takes a lot of the tension out of the movie retroactively yeah 
Yeah, it does. And it kind of like, I was, I love the film, okay? Until we got to that last 15 minutes or so where we get that confession. I'm like, wait, name the company assholes. Name the company assholes. And then nothing. And it's like, and maybe that's the whole point is like, he builds this universe where you expect that to happen and it just yeah, doesn't I happen. Think, I think that kind of is the point. We get, it's just random it's, bad it's, luck. It's this existential, basically. the universe sucks. And, and uh, you know, sometimes you get caught in how much the universe sucks and through random chance. And sometimes you escape it. Yeah. And it's all, it's all random. Sometimes you get your money back and it doesn't yeah. matter because it's too late. Yeah. And that's, uh, I think, I think that's kind of the point. And I, I certainly understand it the problem. And it's really hard in to that deal his with, motivation though. doesn't really make sense. And as, within the narrative, um, it kind oh, of okay. undermines. Well, the I narrative. will say this: if you've ever sat in a Japanese apartment when it's 105 degrees <laughs> with no air conditioner, you kind of do understand his motivation. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can understand him wanting to kill somebody. Um, but no, I mean, yeah, it's just like his motivation is reasonable in a weird way. Like if he's just a criminal, yeah. a guy who really wanted money, it would actually be okay. I would deal with it better. It's like I just really needed wanted money, but that's not. He wants to destroy this yeah. man who's above him. Yeah, and that and that makes it weird instead of like kind of believable because you could believe in like you see it in police procedurals all the time where it's like the kidnapper kidnapped because he wanted money well, it's, it's, or he's a bad it's guy it's the psychopath stalker mentality you know it's the it's the people yeah. that you know it's it's the guy who who kill who shoots Reagan because he thinks Jodie Foster hates him <laughs> yeah they kind of they they set him up as if he's again they set him up as if there is more to this than just yeah. money the money is a means of ruining Hanzo Gonzo and instead, it is just blind, unfortunate chance yeah. 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 that it happened this way. And this dude would totally have been fine if just he got a ton of money out of him and went on his merry way, figuring, well, that guy can probably afford yeah. it. And for all he knows, that is chump change to Toshiro Mufuni, and, or, or maybe not chump change, but, you know, that is not a life-destroying yeah. amount of well, money for him. It. And he would have gotten his money, and Mifune would have gotten his kid back, and only been slightly poorer for it. And that, and you get the sense that that outcome would have been totally okay with this guy because he was just a dick who wanted some money. But the plot, but up until they tell you he was just a dick who wanted some money, they are playing him up as yeah, so much, so much Purposely more of a intellect and, and a and... deliberate intellect. Yeah. You know, well, he, who has orchestrated this whole thing so very masterfully? He still, he still orchestrated it masterfully, and it has a very, very, you know, deliberate intellect in how he handles himself not getting caught, and and how right. he handles the, you know, the delivery of the money. It's just it 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 feels bad because he's not doing it out of revenge. He's just doing it. Yeah, he's not of, doing it for any reason other than just being a jerk. Yeah, being a, a sociopathic guy. Well, it's kind of. It's, it's, there's, uh, you know, some people, uh, commenting on this movie call him the, the devil in mirrored sunglasses. And he actually, he doesn't remind me of a traditional view of the devil, but he reminds me of the devil in, uh, he's a little bit worse, but he reminds me of the devil in Bedazzled, the original Bedazzled. The devil does a lot of bad things, but they're all like impotent things. And they're just because he's a jerk. Like he, he no, scratches he's records. The, he's the, he's he rips the, out the the last yeah. page of a mystery novel. <laughs> he he's the devil. He's closer to the devil from Futurama. Yeah, yeah. he is kind of the robot because he because he, he, he is the devil. He has to do devil yes, things. Yes, exactly. And uh, I don't I yeah, don't think that I, works as a motivation because uh, well, yeah, I, it does. It, if they didn't set up those company guys at the beginning yeah. to be the obvious reason why his life is being you know, that's ruined, mis- that's or, or, in, or they've hired this guy, or they are in league with yeah, him somehow, you want him somehow, you're waiting for the connection. And it's... Right, and since that doesn't happen, that's what his motivation would be fine if it were just if we didn't have those guys. Yeah. If like if this amount of money would just ruin Toshiro Mifune's character because he can't afford yeah. it. Not in reality. He's not liquid that way. Yeah. Then, like, and and then there weren't those guys. You would go, oh, well, this guy's just a sociopath. He's just a yeah. crazy person who decided to destroy somebody else's life to gain what he wanted. 
that's a believable bad guy in the world of police drama because in the world there are bad guys who yeah, in the world want, of this want, being a mystery though we need some amount of misdirection to yeah that's true and I'm just sad because we got misdirected in the wrong direction yeah. and it's really yeah. upset to it, it's end. just You're it's like, just oh we, my God, we spend really? so much energy on that misdirection. On the misdirection. Yeah, even the police believe it. Even the these police believe it. Until yeah, but we find out we find out, you know, even only halfway through their whole breakdown of evidence that they no longer believe that these guys are involved. So we find out early enough that that they're not, but we still want them to well, be. Well, we find out that they're not obviously. Yeah, involved. we still want them to be. That they may be somehow slightly more well, clever. Which than you, that. yeah, you're you all you almost think it's a double fake out of here's the misdirection of these guys. All right, we've we've explained that the police have been like, never mind, that was a red herring. But you're like, except maybe it is that maybe that's the red herring is the police <laughs> declaring them uninvolved, right, and then the final twist is going to be yeah. that they had fooled even the police. A twist back, yeah. And there was yeah, there want. was a layer underneath even that of culpability here. But no, nope, it's right. just. This dude that Crazy really guy. just got tired of fucking seeing his house. My problem, my problem yeah, with that final it was so scene. So damn hot. In my problem house. with that final scene was less him, and more. Um, I think it kind of undermines the moral dilemma of the movie to have, uh, to not have him fall that very, very far, to not have Gondo ruined. Because he, he falls for a little bit, he maybe loses his house, but then he gets another job almost immediately as a vice yeah, president. Well, here's the thing. Well, he's a very he... comp. He's Toshiro Mifune. He was never going to be out of work. Well, yeah, yeah he ha- he's a competent man who has he's, a skill. He went. He was struggling by on period reenactments for a while, and then he got back into the shoe business. Yes. <laughs> what, what, what I was thinking though about that though is you get into that he gets his money back. Yeah. And that's what the the difference there is that he can't pay off they he most certainly loses his house yeah. and everything he owns yeah. but that but he all told he still has enough money out of that 50 million or whatever that yeah. he had that his debts are paid and he has enough to maybe rent like the same kind of apartment that we can believe that he fell pretty far yeah and that, that his skill and that but that's that is the point of the film this bad guy one of the knock him down several hundred pegs. Yes. But that doesn't happen because Toshiro Mifune's character has a skill. Because he's he's too good. He does a thing well. You're right. Right. You can you can take away all of his money and he's still better than you. Yeah. But Because he's just a better person. Because Mitt Romney is just a better human being than the rest of us. This (laughs) is applicable. You see what I'm saying, right? Like you if millionaires are just better people. Right, exactly. <laughs> they all, they all totally, much like Mishir, Toshiro Mifune, they are all literally all possessed of just singular gifts and talents, and they are all one hundred percent responsible for hard work generating their wealth, and not, you know, as a result of a variety of systemic inequalities that dis that disproportionately favor them over others. Well, that's I think that's right, that's, that's well, where I like, get the problem here is that is that uh, I kind of want him to be punished a little bit but he's he not that guy he isn't he's that not guy. the guys he at that isn't company. that guy but they don't set him up as and that they guy. don't he's a he, likable he's yeah a person if the, he did, there's he, yeah he there's that sense money. there's that very important twist which is that we are because they humanize him as having these yeah. noble aspirations and legitimate skills we it is that the other guy is the villain whereas but in in a in another in another sense in another uh, yeah, in another in another film, in a, the and there, are, there is a guy. very you could make a very subtle, mild plot adjustment wherein, yeah, the hero would be, you know, perhaps using different means, but the hero would be the extortionist yeah. bringing low this Whoa. this magnate who deserves not to sit upon the hill think, and look down. I think my else. problem what is mean? that while I recognize that that Gondo deserves everything he has, and he has worked hard and he is talented and he has it. The villain's motivation is still um, class jealousy, and it, it still point. It still paints this. Well, well, maybe well, maybe our upper class, class is still occasionally virtuous, and there are other members of the upper class who are not virtuous. The the other guy and shoe company executives aren't virtuous people, but but that this 
the only motivation for this was that the lower class is uh, is jealous of the upper class. But that I think that's painting it a little bit wrong. It's not just that because there there are other movies that feature that as a primary topic. Uh-huh. But they also don't usually feature a sociopath. <laughs> well, I, no, you make a valid point. Yeah, they, His un- primary uh, yeah, motivation I, I is that, that he is they, crazy. They do. They they maybe they don't go far enough. Yeah. They, but they they definitely make it a point that it is not just class jealousy, which is in and of itself, you know, not necessarily an unsympathetic motive. That this guy has nothing, and every day he walks by and sees a man who, as far as he knows, you know only has what he has by quirk of fate and being born into the right circumstances in a grossly unequal socioeconomic system. And, you know, but for, you know, the caprice of fate, I'd be sitting on the hill and you'd be sitting down here. It's not because you are yourself inherently special or that you deserve this. But in but in this case, it is that. It is that Hanzo Gonzo is inherently special and virtuous and skilled and... Well, has, weird thing is, is in is that, has in some way earned earned his 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 lifestyle and does not also, you know extort yeah. his lifestyle or Maybe, wield well, the, it with, the, with arrogance and the caprice. weird thing I want to point out also is that this person that our bad guy is in a position where if he gave himself enough time if he were not a sociopath not a psychopath he would be in a similar situation yeah, he he's is, an intern at a hospital yeah, he is a med student he's yes right now his life sucks. Because he lives in a crappy apartment with yeah. no air conditioner. And maybe that is connected to his insanity. But if he gave himself the time that... Uh, uh, I, now I don't know the character's actual name. Gondo. Uh, Gondo gave himself. He would be able to work himself up to a real job that would pay well. Yeah. It's not, it's not the trash burner who's exhibiting class jealousy. It's a guy who doesn't... Haven't, hasn't earned his class jealousy. Okay. Going to med school is expensive. He somehow is affording something that is expensive. Yeah. He is in a studio apartment. He's not the guy living on the in the crack alley that they go to. Or, well, not crack. Heroin. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, the heroin alley is pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Too. You know what I mean? But like, yeah. he's none of those people. He hasn't earned his class jealousy. It, his class jealousy is derived from his insanity rather than yeah. from any real socioeconomic standpoint. His apartment is no worse than many people live in for, you know, during their college years yeah. or something like that. I don't know. It, it, which, which is what they're trying to say. Because if you're also, I think, if you're a Japanese person watching that apartment or watching that movie at the time that this film was released, you're like, that's not so bad. Yeah. This guy's an asshole. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, you know I'm, what I mean? Like, it reads that way if you have the right perspective maybe i just I feel you just want you just want to take down all those those highbrow well I, mean, I know what it is adam i don't no, i really <laughs> i know what it is no, i'm just i feel I'm no just i kind of it. feel i kind of feel gondo's too virtuous maybe is is my problem that he's, he's yeah but he's also know, a he's, play character he's the hero of our movie yeah but in the first in the first hour during his moral dilemma and and you know his his background his backdoor meeting or backroom meetings to try and take over this company, he's kind of set up as as a Macbethian character. He's 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 looking to be king. There was a um, there was a review of this film I want to say that said that this is the speaking of Macbeth that this is the this is a excellent companion piece to Throne of Blood in some sense, being the. Kurosawa Macbeth adaptation, huh. where where Macbeth married a little better. Yeah, well, yeah, and to that regard, his wife is obviously a much more virtuous person than Lady Macbeth is, because she doesn't encourage him in his, blindly in his uh, in his own jealousies, um, but it, and, and instead, you know, tries to. And she's she's a very virtuous person. I can accept that, but he he's not that virtuous because it takes him. Days and days well, of self argument, yeah, and he still gets rewarded. Well, it doesn't for... take him days and days because we don't actually the amount of time that elapses is not very substantial yeah, right. in the living room scene. We're not watching it quite shot for shot for actual time, but it's not like I'll call you tomorrow. It's yeah. like I'll call you later. Yeah, 
Well, so I think it doesn't take him that long to decide. But I think also it's important to understand that we, and maybe again we're talking. So there's some minor cultural differences too to talk about. But he is also deeply in love with his company. Yeah, and he knows that when he sacrifices his money, he's sacrificing his family and his company. That those assholes we saw at the beginning of the film will take over. Yeah, and the, his and his company will be nothing anymore. The quality will go out the window. It'll just be trash. That this company he worked for for thirty years will be trash. And I, I know that like, yeah, it shouldn't take him that long to decide to save the chauffeur's son. But at the same time, we don't. The police also take their time getting to the point of saying that like they will. This guy will probably kill the kid. You know what I mean? And then the whole idea is that he eventually comes out on the right side. You know what I mean? Like, the moral dilemma is not relevant as long as you make the right decision in mm-hmm. this this way of thinking. Like, he makes yeah, the right yeah, decision. There's Yeah, there's a certain amount of... It, it, would, it would have been more interesting. It would have been, I think, a more interesting film if they had... If this was the fall of virtue. If he is painted as this exceptional person... For you know, with all the time that they spend on that, and then he makes the choice to, well, fuck it, it's not my kid, and the company comes first. If they had there, and then yeah, I mean that, and then the film had gone movie. from there, and but then it wouldn't be a police procedural. Yeah, well, I no, that's the thing. It would, I think it, it would have been still, a di- if it still one. had been a police procedural, and I think it would have been, or if he had, if he had tried to tried to somehow get out of it in some way because I think yeah. it would have been more interesting to watch and then it unfolds the police would have eventually through their investigation of this realized what he had done and sort of or you know where he had how do I want to put this how seen seen where he had this guy had made you know as much of an asshole as this guy is this guy made perhaps an even more inhuman choice mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but then then we're talking about, at this point, we've created a new film yeah, that I'm sure right. has been made. <laughs> and my point is that in, in the context of this film and the world that they've created with the characters they've created, I don't have a problem with his character. Maybe maybe I painted his myself into a corner. Toward... I painted myself in an interpretive corner by viewing him as Macbeth in that first little bit. Yes, I think you did, because he's not a bad guy. Yeah. He... Like, we even get hints from his dialogue that, that even his reasons for acting kind of Macbethian are good reasons. Yeah. You get more into that, the, the king is bad. You get you get more of a Brutus character than you do a Macbethian character. I have to kill the king. Okay. I have to take over the company because my, my uh, instead of country, my company is suffering. You know what I mean? It's... It, it's a very different character, is all I'm saying. And and you know, we even we see that he, you know, it's. Eh. I felt the same way at times during the film. I will agree that like there were a couple times where I was like, man, this shouldn't be so tough. But you know, at the same time, he did come up with the right answer. Yeah. And he does suffer for it. Yeah, he becomes executive of a company, but. From what we can tell, he also might actually be making shoes at the company while being executive at the company. We don't really know. And the whole point was eventually to say to this guy, you thought that, like, oh, I gotta think of the way it phrases. The whole point in the end is that this man, the bad guy, was wrong. His belief that the only thing that separated them was fate Mm -hmm. was wrong. And that there are other things that separate people. That there are that that this man's belief that he could destroy this man he saw as above him is not necessarily accurate. But we do get a picture in the same film of people who he could have destroyed completely. Like those guys from the other the other guys from the company. Yeah. And that's why we're supposed to sympathize with uh, Gondo's character, because he is a good man that was just the victim of circumstances. Yeah. Okay. And doesn't get destroyed, gets nearly destroyed. So, I'll go with I it. think the ending could have been longer. Yeah. I think he, they could have fleshed out how he undestroyed himself. 
that would have been... Yeah, that's kind of a problem. It would have helped. In that he just kind of mentions it in passing. Yeah, I think that would have helped. That would have made that entire portion a little bit cleaner. Uh, because you end up with this, like, oh, crap, we're out of film. <laughs> kind of thing at the end there. That last ten minutes is like, you know what, and man? And we got a run time here, people. So, I'll tell you what, we're just going to wrap it up. This guy was a dick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. right. <laughs> exactly. That's It does feel that way a little bit. And so, they could have spent five minutes showing him how he gets out of it by being a good man. That, like, his friend comes over from another company and says, like, I heard you need a job. Or whatever, you know what I mean? Because he's all over the newspaper, right? Yeah. So, like, another dude from another shoe company is going to say, hey, that guy is now a free agent. It's not that hard to believe, but (laughs) we we still, it would have helped to see it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree. You're right. I'll give that to you, Pat. I like him. He, I like the character. I like I him too. He's a nice it's, guy. I he's like played him. by Mafune. It's hard not to like him. Exactly. It's not, it's not to just be like, my God, the career. <laughs> yes. So, so charismatic. It's nice but to I see think him. We can all it's agree nice to see like him clean film. shaven too. Yeah, I agree. But, like, I will admit though, like for the first whatever hour and a half i was like i'm gonna buy this movie and then after i saw the last half an hour where we wrapped it up i was like i'm not gonna buy this movie (laughs) it really did change it for me because i did not like the ending yeah but Um, i do like the character so yeah no it was good enough i recommended it to my wife and told her she should watch it sometime so um there is there is one other thing trying to switch gears real quick though um the the very brief use of color in this movie was so surprisingly I dramatic. I um, loved it. I mean, very, very much like Schindler's List and the and the girl in the red the red coat. Um, but the fact that it was done in you know what fifty three sixty three. Um, yeah, I mean they they specific, they colorized it that yeah that yeah they color they colorized those those mm, frames that sequence and. Uh, yeah, it's the the, the smoke the from the from the trash burner burning the briefcases. It's supposed to, and they mentioned earlier, it's supposed to produce a crimson smoke. And we right, see, and, and if they had smell o vision, we would have gotten that yes, too. I'm sure. Yes, yes, we see it's that wet. that crimson that crimson smoke, and that that is a great shot. Uh, just well, because and, it's yeah, so surprising. It's just... in, I wasn't expecting it at all. And well, no, was neither was I. And I thought it was amazing that, like, in a world where I never like. Everything's in color, right? Yeah. You're, this is, what, 220 insert. Yeah, it's 1963. Well. This whole movie could have been in color. <laughs> but the thing is, in black and white, and even for modern people, we found that shocking. Yeah. Because we're working entirely in black and white, and then all of a sudden, color. There's a certain, I think in a lot of ways, that that is one of, Kurosawa's hallmarks around this period is a deliberate choice to remain in black and white. Yeah. For for Yojimbo, Sanjuro, there's there's quite a few movies in the sixties in particular that he makes that are could be color and are not. And are sort of deliberate. Well, wor- especially in this film, the co- the black and white works. It works well. It it gives it a certain grittiness that you wouldn't get if it were in color as yeah. much. Yeah. It's, it, it, it lends for, to the For drama. my money, I think almost all police drama should be in black and white. It, it does add to the drama a little I bit. Would like to see, I would like to see more Law & Order black and white. Huh? There you go. Vincent, dun, dun. Vincent Donofrio may not annoy me as much if, you, if all of his shots were in black and white. That's, the, that's another like, thing I find amusing about this, is that like, if they had done this... Uh, if, if, if this if this had been a, a law and order criminal intent episode, at the end Vince Donofrio would have bent down in this dude's face, and he would have been like, "Yeah, I didn't. He had a nice house. There, done. Yep, I did it. He had a nice house. I hated him for it. Like this would have been the most anticlimactic. He would deny <laughs> yeah, right? would have denied Vince Donofrio all his all his posturing." Because this guy would have actually just been like, fuck that guy because he's rich. How about that? Get out of my face. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? Nah, no psychology here. <laughs> just yep. fuck that dude. Just. There's. <laughs> I am wearing my motivation on my sleeve here, buddy. But then again, yeah, if this were if this were a modern police job, we would have heard enhanced 400 times. Right. 
We would have solved the crime in like 15 minutes. Vincent yes. Donofrio would have bent down in his face and just said enhance into his, like an inch away from him <laughs> over and over again until he broke. But like, even like, you know, I mean, if you think about it, like, they would have magically had some cameras that picked him up from the train or something. They would have had to do a DNA it's... sequencing and then hack some IPs and mangled a bunch of other computer terminology. All of the, all of the IPs would have been hacked. <laughs> they would have, they would have. Someone at some point would have breached someone else's firewall. The train's firewall would have been The train's breached. firewall would have been breached. They would have hacked the train. The they river's, totally the river's IP laboratory. would have been hacked. Right. Um, they, would have, they would have backtraced the train hack to you his... You know, if this were a modern police drama, we would have figured out what the 2.5 inch uh, police, the briefcase meant before we even threw it out the window. It's true. And they would have thrown something else out the window. It... Thank God it isn't. Of course, if this were a modern police drama, uh, we also wouldn't have spent the first hour in the living room. <laughs> yeah, so, the uh, living room. Yeah, that's true. There would have been no dilemma at yeah. all. I really, I, I love, I love how this movie was shot. You're, you're, you're absolutely right about the endings, and, uh, and, yeah, but, uh, great no, movie. The, oh, it is a great movie. It's just so, man, that last thirty minutes really hurt me. Yeah. Like after yeah. you invest that energy and that time in this film, and then it's like, uh, just yeah. crazy, dude. It's, it's just crazy dick. dick. Yeah, crazy dick. And then like, um, but no, like, yeah, but oh man, the police procedural part, man, I loved it. I thought yeah. it was great. I enjoyed it so much, and it's just so like, yeah, it's so nice to watch. Also, like, people interesting, actually doing work I, instead I of just like doing magic that they on were a fairly keyboard. again for for. It's something you don't necessarily expect out of Japanese films of this time. It's certainly not Kurosawa. That they were fairly, uh, they did not shy away from heroin stuff. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Fa- I found yeah. that like almost jarring in a sense that they were very oh, such yeah. a such the, a you know the murder in, by the murder by pure heroin. <laughs> right. Which even in the '60s uh, seems like a it seems almost like out of place. It seems almost like an anachronism. Yeah. Uh, it seems like they should not be having heroin plot points until at least like the seventies or eighties. Yeah, yeah, right. It's like where's the this guy should have just stabbed him or something. But yeah, oddly enough, that reminded me of something that I I thought, man, when we okay, so when we're finding out where the heroin came from, okay, we walk into a foreigner bar, okay. Yes, I'm like, please, Akira Kurosawa, don't do this, don't <laughs> don't make that statement. Do not do what. So many of your contemporaries do, <laughs> and even still do, do not claim that all drugs in Japan come from je- come from foreigners. Don't do it. And, and, and then mixed race God, couples. Not, yeah, and then thank God it's a Japanese woman who sells them the yes, heroin. Yes, I was like, Japanese. thank you, Akira Kurosawa, for not doing that. But it's still it's still interesting that the underbelly is is a foreign nightclub uh, full of yeah. full of marines dancing with yeah, Japanese yeah, women. <laughs> well, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. But at well, least it wasn't. There's only so many punches least, Kurosawa was going to pull. Yeah. But thank goodness that it was not a... Oh, man. If it had been a, a white guy, I probably would have turned the, the film off. Okay. One other thing that I really loved about this film, in the fact I had to go back and, and double check that this is what, you know, what actually happened, there is no background music until... Is there not? Really? In, until... Um, the little boy, the chauffeur's son, when he's trying to show, when they meet back up with the police, and and he says, "Oh, this is where I was," and he runs off up the hill, and he disappears. There is suddenly this really dramatic, like bum bum, when they can't find the boy, and that is like the first background music in the entire does it, movie. Does it continue from there, or is it just like only it, really? It goes sparse? back to silence for a little bit, and obviously we have a lot of incidental music. Uh, on screen right, music with the dance music. clubs yeah, and like the, a, yeah. yeah, but but during, I don't believe I I admit I could be misremembering, but I went back and checked for a solid like ten minutes. I rewatched the first hour, uh, about ten minutes of the first hour, and there is there is no soundtrack, and it is even more stage play in that regard. Yeah, right. That's but, totally a stage thing, and I was like, but that's the way it is. Like the entire film set up so that like there is no break. Yeah. Even when there's a break, the character's doing something that like generates its own drama, sound, and drama yeah. that you don't yeah. have. I like it. I like the yeah. fact that it didn't need a soundtrack. It didn't need a soundtrack, and it was it was ridiculous that there wasn't one for so long, and that it real. I wasn't even cognizant that I was missing something, 
until no, it I didn't. Though. I didn't realize that until you just yeah. told me. Yeah. So that's amazing. Anyway. Amazing. That is. Uh, that's actually pretty amazing. Actually. Yeah, it really. Is. You could be really so is. into a movie that they didn't bother have to put in this. They didn't have to put music in. Yeah, especially because when balance. You won't notice. When balance against like our next film, Alphaville, uh, where there's like legitimate silence in the movie. <laughs> And it's terrifying. And it's terrifying and so jarring. Whereas this movie just has no background music, and it's it's completely acceptable. And uh, I would say, if you wanted a modern, uh, a modern contemporary of that, where you do not, you get pretty well into the movie before you realize, wait a minute, there has not, there hasn't really been any background music whatsoever. I would recommend uh, No Country for Old Men. Yes. Which yes. sort of infamously, about halfway through, I realized why i had this extremely i had you know this very bleak sense and very empty desolate motif from the movie which is that they had at no point made any attempt to cover up you know the very natural feel of it and especially with all the you know texan landscapes that are going on there they had done no no soundtrack yeah yeah, it definitely the lack of soundtrack adds to the bleakness of that movie really, really quite well. But uh, but yeah, uh, anything else we want to talk about, guys? No. Um, wish the for last more to show to show Mufuni clean shaven. Feel free to check out. God, what is it? Where he plays <laughs> what are you, a Yamamoto for a salesman? A salesman? You're like, if you more, if you like this, for more. What's uh? He was it's... he played Yamamoto in some American war film in the Pacific. Which is like a really jarring thing to see him, number one, sort of aged, but number two, clean shaven and speaking in English. Huh. It's a fairly famous. I don't know. uh, Pacific War film from the, you know, immediate post war period. Uh, I really. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know either. Um, let's let's look at the internet real quick. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, let's not it. do that because if you go to uh, Toshiro Mifune's um, list of credits, his IMDb <laughs> for the record is is him making the most ridiculous face imaginable from Seven Samurai. <laughs> I like no, I like that picture. That is one of my favorite pictures of him. That's one of my favorite moments in that movie. Is him like he's, he is a great actor. Can we and and pairing pairing such an amazing actor with a really great great director uh who's midway you know, the film was midway in 1976 yeah okay and he plays yamamoto interesting um god that man had such a long career yeah he really yeah right at it it's ridiculous what was the um what's that he was in a western of all things with uh an english-speaking western and i cannot remember the name of that film either but there is a He's in an English-speaking Western with, like, um... God, what is his name? Not Eastwood. One of the other... One of those other guys. Uh, the guy from Once Upon oh, a Time in the West. All those Western guys look the same to me. Who am I thinking of? I really have no idea who you're thinking of. Charles Bronson, I almost want to say. <laughs> Charles Bronson. Interesting. Interesting. It's, which is the most bizarre film. I have not... How does he fit into a western? What is the plot? Yeah, it's it is a really like what the hell Desperado uh, Outpost? No, that can't be it. Let me see if I Okay. Can, uh, how about uh how about we figure out this information? Let's not uh, figure this out on, yeah. on, on <laughs> after we're done with the podcast. Well, thank you. Yeah. Anyway. Thank you for joining us once again. <laughs> yeah. That was, was high and low. Was, yeah. And uh you know, it's it really is Despite the problems in the ending, it's still one of my favorite movies we've watched so far. It's it's uh, good. We've, we've certainly seen a lot worse so far. Oh, and, yes, we uh, have. We'll, we'll continue but it's not on that better journey. than RoboCop. Let's face it. It's not. Uh, no, no. <laughs> but we will continue on our on the highs and lows, the heavens and hells of the, uh, of Criterion, the Criterion Collection. collection. Oh. The premature uh, ejaculations with... of the... the <laughs> Wait, you I never did loop in. that back around. You never, right. okay. you nope, never I just did. I just did. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. What is Armageddon if not that? So... Uh, All the, right. The premature ejaculation of film. Join us next time when we uh, when we talk about and, and Donovan unfortunately leaving us again. But uh, we'll talk about John McGuire's Alphaville, oh, and uh, and we'll move on into the future from there. Thanks for listening.
You've been listening to Lost in Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via lostincriteria at withtwobrains.com or join us on the web at www.lostincriteria.com.